All right, guys, let's go exploring. Let's go exploring. Let's, let's talk about exploration. Let's talk about in detail what it just may take for one of us to get out there and trailblaze, right? So, of course, you have your your ships, your, your certain ships, they are already uh, classified with certain jobs. So you have a, a, a Pathfinder ship like your Mustang Beta, and you have your full-blown exploration ship like the Kila or Carrick. And so we're going to talk about those aspects of the game and look into more detail about exactly what would it take. I mean, how would you get started? You know, uh, will you just get into a ship and just, you know, just throw caution to the wind and just go anywhere? Or does it take a certain type of planning? I think it takes a certain type of planning. But anyway, we're, we're going to get into it. So hang on to your hats. Here we go. So, for starters, preparations. What exactly kind of preparations would a would-be explorer have to go through before embarking on that epic mission? Well, you will really have to consider, first off, how far out can you go? Because uh, that, that, that is really predicated upon how much fuel and how, ef you know, how efficient your ship is at burning that fuel so if you have an exploration ship chances are you have an extended gas tank or a few extended gas tanks say like in the uh, freelancer DUR that has a couple of extra uh, fuel tanks for the long distance runs or something with a really big fuel tank and high efficiency say like a, a Mustang Beta or the 315P and actually did you know that any ship of the 300 series could be turned into an impromptu explorer. Did you know that? If you have a 300i, you can basically turn that 300i into a 315p uh, minus the paint job. All you need to do is, you know, to buy the right components. And that will also be available in game eventually. I, I don't know if we'll be able to do that uh this year but it's coming so you will be be able to buy uh, components for your ship to equip it for deep space exploration i own a taurus as do many of you and the cool thing about this taurus is that i can take it up to an aquila level ship minus the snub fighter uh, of course, I could care less about the snub fighter because I, I have, you know, uh, I've got the X1 and I've got a dragonfly and I have an ox. So I got the snub fighter thing covered. So it doesn't matter. I can just throw it on the, in the cargo bay and take it with. But that's the awesome thing about some of these ships. So if you have a, a even a 350R, you can take a 350R, throw a couple of scanners in there, and you have yourself a Pathfinder. How cool is that? A super fast pathfinder. So um, there, there's you know there's tweaking that you could do to your ship. There's a level of modularity to each ship. Uh, of course, its chassis size and shape will restrict what you can put into it. But you can add extra stuff to your ship eventually. So what about like uh, food stores? W will there be uh, types of food and and water that you have to pack on your ship? for yourself and your crew that I just don't know I haven't seen anything I've seen a couple of uh, threads online at the uh, on spectrum and th th they kind of alluded to no there, there won't be like actual food stores for you to get but then I think that was like a year old so I don't know what they're thinking now or what they're going to implement now so for now we can skip the food and the water part because I don't think that's available 
So your fuel is very important. The size of your tanks are very important. And of course, your weapons. But you don't have to worry about weapons all that much anyway because if you have an exploration ship, you're pretty much armed. Unless you have one of the smaller uh, uh, Pathfinders like the 315P or the uh, Mustang Beta. And they come stocked with a couple of weapons. But you can always, you know, always add more to them. Okay, so you have your fuel and, and you, you, you have your, your armaments set up. And you know, of course you have your gear on. And what are the preparations? You might need data. That's another thing. Data. Data is also very important because the, going out there flying blind is not always cool. You want to have some type of direction to head into. Like, uh, is there a star system? Let's just, let's just say you went to the Ark, right? And, and you know, it's this huge repository of uh, astronomical knowledge that's in the solar system. Um, well, that's in the UE system. And, and you go there, and you're researching archives, and you come across some really curious things. And for example, you, you find that there is a solar system that looks like it's maybe three astronomical, well, let's just say 15 astronomical units wide or large, right? But only two AUs of data is available. So that means that leaves a, a good 60 to 70 percent of that solar system or star system unexplored. Well, that raises a big question mark. Hey, can I get to it now? You know, so if there's not a lot of data on that star system, okay, how can I get there? So you will have to check the archives for jump points that will get you to that star system. And the rub might be there's there are jump points that may only get you but so far. You follow me? So now you will have to figure out what jump point will get you the closest to your objective. And then you're going to make sure that you have jump scanners, uh, a scanner array that's designed to pick up uh, jump point anomalies. So you will have to use the known jump point and then kind of scout around out there and find a jump point that will ultimately take you to that solar system or that star system or whatever and that requires some work so you, you may need to consult the archives the arc archives you're, you're gonna need to get some information about that um, what type of intelligence is available here's now okay now here you go uh, fellow Terrapin and Hornet tracker owners owner tracker owners because you guys are the AWACS basically here's where you guys can come in Hornets and the Terrapins are well armored and well armed so they can go into totally unknown areas and sniff around they can't pick anything up you know of course you find something that you can't pick it up however you can go out there and you can scout unknown areas and find out who lives there is there a hostile presence in this area or are there mineable resources here and if there are resources will it be safe is the you know is the area hostile I mean, like if it's inhabited by alien species that just doesn't like humans or is it just naturally hostile say it's it's nestled in a in a in a nebulous cloud Kind of like a kind of, kind of like the coil, where it's nestled in this nebulous cloud, and there's all kinds of electrostatic discharge going on out there. So flying in a ship a ship into an electro electromagnetic storm is a bad idea. You can lose that ship most definitely. So trackers and terrapins can do that, which, which is cool. So I, I own a track I own a um a terrapin. So I I think I may do that with my terrapin. And so what you guys can do. Because you guys are also pathfinders, right? And you get this information, you save it, and you can bring it back and you can sell it. Or if you are said owner and you own an exploration ship yourself, you can sit on that data, come back home, and upload it to your large scale exploration ship. Say, you know, either your your your, your DOR or your your Carrick or your you know Aquila and say hey let's muster a crew we're gonna make some money and go down in history here 
you know, you, you could do that. You could do that. So that that's that's preparation. Those are preparations. So kind of rehash, you're going to make sure that you have more than enough fuel, i.e. extended fuel tanks. You're going to make sure that you have the, you know, that, that uh, capable scanners and sensors, right, to pick up jump points and uh, any kind of anomalies, uh, mineral deposits, that kind of thing. You want to make sure you're armed. Uh, that, that goes to what I was saying. And you want good data. You want good data. You, you don't want something that's so shoddy that you follow this information and you end up in the hot in the bees hive of a uh, vandal. And then because an exploration ship is not built for that. <laughs> I mean, well, say for the Carrick. I'm sorry. I'm a Carrick fanboy. I just can't wait to take my Carrick out. <laughs> but uh, most exploration ships are not built for heavy combat. Uh, even though the Aquila is well armed, it is not built for that. The 600i, forget it. I own a 600i. Already know right off the bat, I'm not going into any hostile systems with my 600i. You know, I'm going to go out there in a Pathfinder ship, like the you know, like I like the aforementioned ships, and get my intelligence first. And some Pathfinder ships can carry a little bit of something. The 315P has to SCU if I'm not mistaken so you can carry a little something on that ship if you find something of interest you can carry it back with you so once I get that data I'm ready to go I've loaded up my ship I got everything armed I've got all my scanners I've got my crew ready and that's just another thing to a crew will there be specialty crews you know what I mean? Or will there be like certain crew members? Let's just say you have to hire some NPCs. Will, will there be certain NPC crew members who specialize in a uh, a certain kind of uh, discipline? And will those disciplines uh, affect your overall expedition? So I mean, will, will you will you need someone who is really well versed in geology so they can like uh, look at like surface features and tell you whether the planet is volcanic or if, if it has a subsurface ocean or if it's like liquid liquid nitrogen or something or will you, will you need a biologist who specializes in microbes and can tell you if there is a possible uh, risk of being exposed to a contagion and bringing it, bringing it back to the civilized world it, you know they could also talk about uh, what it'll be of course, an engineer who helps you manage your your fuel consumption, helps you repair the ship if that you know that need arises. I, I wonder if that is if that's going to be part of it. Uh, that that's that's a really good a really good question. I have to ask that in Spectrum. But anyway, preparation is done, right? We're done. So we got everything we needed. We're ready to roll. And so now we're going to go into. Uh, taking off so stand by okay now we got everything we need we got the scanners we got the computers we got the weapons we got the data right so now it's time to Hayaka right so we said goodbye to everybody we said very very on our way out and so we picked that right ship which ship will it be don't know. Uh, it depends on what you have in your fleet. Um, you, can, you can start with a Pathfinder, or you can start with a full-blown Explorer. I mean, either way, it's, it's totally up to you. But uh, we're leaving out right now. So we're, we've got our data. We figured out where we're going to go. And as a final prep, you're going to look over your ship. Make sure you have the weapons that you need. You know, it's just double ship because you know because sometimes. In this game, especially in 3.0, stuff doesn't work like it's supposed to, <laughs> and things just don't show up the way you want. So you just want to be doubly sure that everything is in place before you leave. And then, you know, then you head on out and find yourself a good job point and start making your way out to this curious little area that you want to check out, right? Now, let's think about the scanner part, the, the radar part. Like... How the devil are you going to use that? 
I mean, if you're going to explore a deep space, right? So I mean, in in smaller ships, say like the like the Mustang Beta or the 315P, um, those features haven't been enabled yet. So I'm wondering how that's going to work. Is it going to work similar to your Moby Glass, where you open up a window and it shows uh, known objects in that window, like you know planets and moons or whatever? Or is it going to show like a big blob of like nothing like a white fuzz or something and it shows where you are and everything else is like obscured from view because you don't know what's there you haven't explored it yet i wonder how that's going to look and also scanning like using your long-range scanners and, and uh processing facilities that kind of thing how is that going to like how's that going to work so you, you hit you have the data you, you get to where you want to go right and then you're sitting there now what so my my think is that my, my my thought is that you you would need to open up your i guess your your your, your scanner array uh depending on if, if you're like in the kilo or or Carrick or or dur <coughs> Even like I said, like the, the Pathfinders, and and you began, you know, to sit still in your ship and just scan the area, ping the area, find out what's out there, and then start to compile and and collate data. So, let's just say, you know, you're busy scanning. If you're if you're scanning, does that make a whole lot of noise? Like, will, will it attract a lot of unwanted attention? And most likely yes because you know your scanner array emits a lot of electromagnetic uh wavelengths so it's going to make a lot of noise even when you're doing like regular um communications you know from point a to point b uh you're going to make a lot of noise and so that's going to attract attention and like the first thing i would probably do before i head out in an exploration ship is to make sure there are no hostile uh, presences in that area hopefully there aren't but they will have long-range capabilities just like I do so even though there may not be anyone in that immediate immediate vic oh, vicinity they still may be able to pick up my EM signature as I'm using my scanners to probe certain areas so I gotta keep that in consideration especially if I'm going into a solar system or, or planetary system that's in a close proximity to a known hostile entity say no, you know, most notably the Vanduul or even the pirates pirates may have already been out there and they may have set up shop someplace right and, and they just want to be way out there where they can't be messed with by the UEE which makes per you know, and it makes perfect sense so I mean you could be sandwiched between a rock and a hard place you know you, you could have left protected UEE space and out here in the, in the middle of nowhere and then not too far from you is like maybe like half an AU away from you is a pirate base and they're listening too and so they'll likely hear your scanners and go hey somebody's sniffing around out there I uh, wonder what kind of ship they've got. And they could probably probe you and find out what kind of ship you have and say, oh, snap, he's got an Aurora. I mean, he's got a, a, um, an Aquila. Let's go steal it. Now you're up shit creek. So, um, I mean, you know, that's a lot of stuff you got to think about. Like, when you're using the scanners, when you're trying, when you're probing unknown areas. And also, what if you're, like, in a nebula or something like that and you're running your scanners and you get feedback because a lot of um, certain types of nebulae, they, they have these crazy electrical f energy fields that can distort or tra or, you know, or like uh, um, I'll, I'll just use distort, can distort a kind of like a radio signal, something that a, a scanner would emit. It could distort it, stretch it, bounce it around, do all kind of crazy stuff, or worst case, create a reaction where you would get feedback like um, like lightning or uh, some kind of a uh, uh, backlash from this gas field that you're in the middle of, you know. So you also have to take that into consideration. Um, say, for example, like say if you were in the coil, and you see how volatile the coil is. Well, you, you know, you run some, run certain types of equipment in a coil. 
you will basically turn yourself into a lightning rod, <laughs> right? And you're going to draw all of the energy into your ship. And adios, muchachos. That's it. So you really have to consider these things uh, before you open up that scanner array and start looking. Um, also, you know, another thing is to... Uh, I think also I would want to listen. You know, I would just I wouldn't even uh, spend a whole lot of time looking. I would spend a lot of time listening first. That's like the big thing for me. I want to miss, make sure there really isn't anybody else out there, right? If there is, what are they? You know, are they, are they hostiles? Are they friendly? Are they neutrals? What are they? Figure that out. And also to listen for. Uh, any incipient noise. It's something that you know, it might be from a planet that's not fully developed yet, you know? Because uh, these planets also have types of signatures that you could pick up on and discern whether or not there's, there's like life on it. But anyway, you know, you, um, with your scanners and your, and your radar, uh, most of these uh, electronic arrays, uh, either in your small ships or your large ships, most of these will have a greater range than weapons, which is a, <laughs> a big plus. So if you're in a small ship, like say if you're in your Mustang, and uh, you're probing an area with your scanners or whatever, and there's some, it's a hostile presence, you find it, and they find you. But they can't get to you yet, and they can't shoot because they're out of range. Your scanners have seen them. They're too far out to even be a threat to you just yet. But you know they're there. But again, unfortunately, they know you're out there and they may be coming to get you so you have options you know you can shut off your rays and go stealth and relocate to another area where you can you know safely look around and, and do your thing or just bug out completely say no I'm not going to go in that area forget it it's just too hot never mind you could do that um, also another possibility with these scanners I would, you know, kind of like think of uh, relay information. The the Drake Herald. That I think that will also play in exploration in a way because, if especially if you're in a small ship or in your in in a ship a, a medium to large ship and you're really really deep deep in the black, you know, you way out there, and you come across some information that's just too freaking juicy to keep to yourself. I mean, too juicy. I mean. You're, you're out there, you might be cruising around in the solar system, and you're probing the areas. Or say, if you're, say if I'm in my Carrick, right, and I, and I send out some, some of my, uh, my uh, AI probes, and they, you know, come across an advanced civilization, and some of my probes get nuked. Not good. <laughs> not, not good at all. And I'm too far out to, um, to effectively bug out and get back to the UEE and say, hey, man, uh, we got a problem. Uh, the Herald could be that middleman, right? So a Herald could be on patrol in the borderline system, somewhere in between where I am and where the UEE is, and I can do a contract. Which that's actually coming up too. You can do that. You can set up a contract and, and make a, or put out a call beacon for a little assistance or whatever. That's coming. You can be able to do that. Um, and I can contact this Herald pilot. Hopefully he's scrupulous. <laughs> Hopefully. I can contact the Herald pilot and say, hey guy, uh, there's some information out here that I, I really, really need to get back, uh, get back planet side. Uh, can you please relay this information uh, to headquarters for me? And I will give you a nice little fee. And if the guy's scrupulous, sure. If he's not, which is a very high probability, well, he said, okay, yeah, sure, I'll do that, and I'll take your money. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to secretly make a copy of these files, and I'm taking them to my people, right, so that we can go do what we want to do with it. Or better yet, we can set up a trap for the UEE, so when they go out there and patrol and whatever, we can come in and sandwich them in between us and the other guys, and we just wipe them out. You know, all, all kind of things can happen with that. But, uh, again, you know, with, with the scanners and the radar, one they will have a greater range than weapons. Two, they will make a lot of noise. So people are going to know where you are when you use them. And um, it, it just requires good discretion. You know, sound, good sound data is really important here. That way you know uh, if you're going into an unknown system, your preliminary reports will tell you that 
there may not be anybody there. So you should be okay. Uh, there's no one in dead space in between. So no one's likely to hear you while you're out there. So you're not going to get harangued by anybody. That's really key. So let's move on to the next topic. Now you made it safely to said solar system. You probed the area looking for any hostiles and you found none. And as a matter of fact, you scanned a couple of uh, moons and some planets and you found raw resources. Good deal. So now comes the fun part. You get to decide whether or not you want to go land there physically or send the probe. Uh, Certain larger ships come with like probes. Again, like my ship, the Carrick, <laughs> comes with probes. Yep. So uh, you, you can send AI probes to these certain areas and check them out firsthand. You know, and get some information about the about the materials that are available. Raw materials, I mean, um, minerals and metals, uh, chemicals, that kind of thing. You can also start doing science say if you have a reliant sin or hey even if not even an endeavor and i think the endeavor will be like the ultimate exploration ship i really do i think i think that endeavor will be like the end all be all <laughs> when it comes out to exploration um my ideal my dream fleet will be an endeavor with a carrick and a couple of aquilas and then maybe one one or two um Mustangs or 315Ps for like vanguards, you know, to go out there and do the probing and stuff. That, I think that'll be, that'll be an awesome fleet. That'll be an awesome expedition right there. But, okay, so you, you found this area, you get there, and it's safe. So you land, and you, you go flying around or riding around in your Ursa or, or space bike or whatever, and, and you start, you know, exploring. And so you start taking samples. You got to take samples, right? You got to take, you know, biological samples. You got to take mineral samples, geological samples. Uh, you got to take atmospheric samples. You got to, you know, and you also got to consider um, quarantine, too, as well, because you're going into an alien environment. You're stepping on alien soil. Uh, you may or may not be breathing in alien air. I mean, cause they may, you may have found a planet with an atmosphere not unlike Earth. You know, you can, you can land there, take your helmet off and breathe around, okay? But you don't know what other kind of path pathogens are in the air. Now, <clears throat> that's the science part. So, you do your science prelim studies. See if it's safe enough for us to walk around on, you know? And I'm still in my 600i, by the, by the way. I'm still using my 600i as an example. Uh, and we, you know, we got some samples. We're back to the 600i. Examine everything. Oh, yes, good. You know, everything's safe. Uh, the water looks like we, can, we found some water on the planet. It's not a whole lot of water, but, you know, most of it is ice. But we can convert that to hydrogen and oxygen for, for fuel if we need it. So we're good, right? And we, we found some, uh, some, uh, some bacteria in the dirt. You know, just subsurface, they're just scraping, just digging a, a few centimeters underneath the surface. We found some bacterial cultures that we carefully wrapped up and flash froze and stored it back on 600 i in quarantine okay so we're on the surface walking around and we're still taking like you know scanning or whatever and then we get then let's say i'm wandering around and then i get a call from one of my crew members hey 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 dude we um we, we just got this weird kind of ping this weird noise uh, like a signal sounds like radio or something but it's nothing we never heard before and, and it's about like two clicks from your position i'll go oh okay let's go find out so me and a couple other guys that were out there with me we hop in our ursa and we go rolling over there and oh lo and behold we see some huts oh shit right <laughs> i think we might have screwed the pooch because why did I say that? Because one, me, I kind of believe in a non-interference type of protocol. I'm like Star Trek, you know what I'm saying? If I, if I come across an alien world that's not developed, right, if that's very primitive, I am not just going to just stroll up in there with my high technology and stuff and say, hey, how you doing? We're friends, yada, yada, yada. We can screw a whole lot of stuff up that way. So I'm not going to go there and do that. 
I'm going to try and stay back and keep a very, very low profile, remain stealthy, likely keep my 600i in very high orbit to where it just looks like a little star, like a shooting star or something flying through the sky, and these primitives won't know what it is. And if I have a rover, I'm hiding it someplace where no one can see it, right? And I'm going to stay out of sight. That's my thing. I want to see civilization in the raw. Right? I don't want to walk up in there and kick around the dirt and laugh at everybody. I'm not, that's not my style. I like to sit back and just watch and say, man, it's pretty cool. You know? But of course, there's always that one person that says, oh, screw that nerd. Let's go, man. I'm going to jump in here. We're going to bring some beer and some pizza. We're going to hang up. We're going to have a ball. You know, hey, you can do that. Sure thing. You can do that. You can do that. You know, no, no, no sweat at all. You can do that. And you go there. Let's say you go there and, and you start, you know, strike up a concourse with these people or things, you know, whatever they are, and when they come out the huts, they're these, like, 15-foot-tall, eight-legged, 12 eye kind of things, man, that look like something, like, like a cross between a xenomorph and a giant spider. It scares the shit out of you. And then, <laughs> so, um, there's always that one crew member, you know, he's, he's going to light somebody up. That one crew member, and you know who that guy is. You don't want that guy on your crew. <laughs> I mean, at least you leave him on the ship to protect in case something jumps off. But you don't want him with your rating. <laughs> He's going to cause a problem. But there's always that one dude. And so when these things come out and they are curious, they're not aggressive. They're just really curious. They come out and surround you. He panics and shoots one. <sighs> issues, right? Issues, issues. So now you just started the war and you up the creek. So by the time you get back to civilization, they're looking for your ass. <laughs> you know, they, they probably want to lock you up because you just murdered an indigenous species. That's, that's not cool. So back to the other scenario. So we, we found this, this, this new civilization. It's very primitive. They don't know about us. And I don't want them to know about us. Just yet. So I'm staying, you know, staying back. I'm staying behind some trees or some rocks or something. And I'm just, I'm just observing them. And I'm recording them quietly. And I'm saving this data and uplo uploading it to my 600i. Right? And for posterity. You know, posterity. So when I get back to civilization, I say, hey, we found this place on this planet and this solar system. And there's people there. So that's the main reason why we explore, right? We explore because we're looking for other civilizations period that's it we're not exploring just because we just want like materials or whatever kind of you know that, that that's kind of like the motivation but the ultimate motivation of exploration is to find other people other civilizations that's it and so mission accomplished i found a new solar system i've explored most of it and i found life awesome right now that's like that's like the ideal scenario but what if let's flip it let's, let's flip it let's flip it let's see we, we went to a solar system and nothing's there like it's a total void right but it's chuck full of minerals and metals and uh gems like uh pipes of burl and, and, and diamond that kind of stuff right we could use that for transmission good stuff good raw material right so again we save all our data upload to our 600i and you could either just sit on that data, which I would do most likely, and then go back home and then come back with a Starfarer or an Orion and go to town. You could do that. Or you could hire yourself a freight forwarder or I mean, a data forwarder, like a, uh, like, like, again, like a Herald, and take that risk. Unless it's somebody you know and you trust, or he's part of your org or something like that. Say, hey, guy, I found some stuff out here, man. Oh, uh, man. Get this information back to everybody else so we can get some folks out here. And as a matter of fact, the pioneer, I told you, man, the pioneer, this is like what a pioneer pilot will be looking for. You, you, you get this information, you found a planet that you could probably live on. It's not necessarily, you can't breathe the air, but it's not too cold either. So you can set up shop there. And you can actually build an outpost or build a small city right there. And you can flourish because there's tons of resources there that you can use uh, with nitrogen, oxygen, uh, nitro, you know, uh, uh, hydrogen, and xenon, that kind of stuff. You, you can get all of that and you can be pretty much self-sufficient, right? So let's say you know somebody who owns a, who, who owns a, uh, a Pioneer. 
Well, you can send that, for, that information back to him. Hey, guy, guess what? We found a place. So here he comes with that great big, that great big ship. He stops that land claim on it. And there you go. That's, that's one way of doing it. So uh, exploration is going to be a lot of fun, especially, you know, um, when it comes down to, like, the settling part. Uh, me, I don't care about settling because I, I just, like, want to get out there and just explore and to see and, and just experience it you know i, I don't want to like set shopping in one spot that would be cool and all though but i just want to get out there into deep space and just really explore and that's also going to work for like the pirates and the you know those no good no those do no gooders you, you know what i'm kind of, you know what i'm talking about the, even the so-called player killers whatever they can get out there they have some explorers in their group they can find an area that's way outside of UEE space that can't be controlled by the UEE and, ha and is never frequented by the UEE. So they can go out there and set up their own city with their own pioneer. And don't think that won't happen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't think that won't happen. Just because you see like a pioneer down there someplace that's setting up shop don't mean, it does not mean that you're looking at a friendly area. Those could be all pirates setting up shop, dude. You know, you know what I'm saying? So... This can go either way, either way. So now we got out there, we did it, mission accomplished, man. We're, we're done. We we we've, we found a, some some good planets, some moons, material. We found like biological signs, life. And another downside is to this: if say if you did strike up a concourse with some indigenous a alien species, you're gonna be locked away for a minute. I mean, uh. Not necessarily because, you know, you did something bad, but you're going to have to be quarantined, man. You know, maybe 30 days. You know, it, it depends on uh, your level of, of exposure. Um, those are some small you know, caveats there, but there's also another caveat that I want to cover. And then I want to close out. So uh, stay tight. Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is one way you can make some money when it comes down to exploration salvage. Uh, having an exploration ship that can carry a little bit of cargo is a big plus. Big, big plus. Uh, the 315P can carry two SEU. Uh, you, you have to, the Freelancer DUR can carry, I think, like um, like 14 or 20, 24 SEU. Uh, it's, just, it's just a little bit less than the standard Freelancer. And then, of course, you have your Aquila. They have, I think, carries like upwards of 20, 25 SCU. And, you know, of course, you have the character carries an awful lot. And uh, Starfarer, the Starfarer carries a shitload of cargo as well. So, I mean, for, for an explorer, um, so let's just say you're, you're in a solar system and, uh, you know, you're flying around and you're, you're taking samples or, or maybe you already had your samples and you're just on board uh, running experiments and that kind of thing and you get a ping on your radar and you know someone says hey that's something out there and so everybody parkers up because you're afraid that there might be a hostile force or it might be somebody else who's looking to rob you you know you, you don't know you, you don't know that far out there so you're nervous and so you go to your scanners and, and, you, and you start to pry it around out there and you see there's a large mass drifting in space not too far away uh, maybe just on the outer reaches you know and then you, you but you motor up to it and further scrutiny reveals that it's a Hulk and it's an unknown kind of configuration you don't know whose ship this is it's not a Vandal, it's not Banu, it's not one of ours so whose is it? Um, you don't know but <clears throat> it's there right and so you make some choices here uh, after scanning it you know it's a dead Hulk there's nobody around you can either just mark the location and come back with, say, a reclaimer to chew it up, you know, and you know, break it down to his, to his uh, raw components, and then sell that or recycle it, and send those kind of uh, send those um, resources over to, say, your pioneer, because your pioneer can use that stuff to build more, you know, colonies or whatever. But yeah, you can send that data, you know, save that data, go back, get a reclaimer, come out there and get it, or you can. Uh, fly over there in, in a smaller ship, say, you know, a space bike, or if you got a snub, snub fighter or whatever, if you're in a Carrick or uh, in a Kila, and you can uh, 
get some loot, <laughs> right? <laughs> you can pick up some loot. You might be able to go there and find some alien relics that you could either one, keep for yourself, or two, throw into the market and sell to make a profit. Wouldn't that be awesome if you find this unknown alien artifact and you could put it in your hangar for a display? Wouldn't that be awesome? It'd be cool if you could put it inside one of those rotating glass cases like they do with like the Vandal armor and that kind of stuff. That 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 would be that would be so awesome if we could do that. But the salvage, yeah, that's definitely something you can keep in mind. You, can, you might be able to, you might find some alien weapon technology, and you can probably sell it to the UEE or sell it to you know your pirate friends or whatever, and you know also for for a profit or keep it to yourself, and you become like the demigod of weapons. You might be like some alien BFG or something. You you, you know you just never know and make good money. So you know you always even though exploration is like this glorious his. Uh, heroic kind of venture there's always that chance or an opportunity to pull in the credits and ultimately that's what we want because credits run expeditions so the more credits you have in your coffers the more work you can do right right okay so let's move on I'm going to use subtitles for this because for some reason my video capture won't work on this. So I, I, I wanted to compare ship sizes and jump points like uh, how far and how many jump points can each ship use. So I, I used the arc map at the RSI site and I started with a small ship. So in, if I had a small ship and I wanted to jump from Earth to say uh, another star system, well how much would I actually need to use? So I, I used the calculator and it, get, and it gave me a pretty cool idea of what I might need. So I would have to use four jumps to get to the Oso star system, for example, using a small ship. And with a medium ship, that goes up. It looks like, uh, it, looks like it goes up like 10. If you notice, it, I mean, it goes up almost twice as much. And when you go to a large ship, it gets even more. So what I'm taking away from that is the small ships can use all jump points, so you can pick and choose whichever one you want to, you know, whichever jump point you want to use, and so that'll save you time on a trip. However, with uh, medium and larger ships, they can't use small jump points, which are more common than other sizes. So they have to pick and choose, and they will have to go around certain areas in order to get to the next jump point. So they use more jump points more medium sized or large large sized jump points and ultimately they use more fuel and they have to go farther so like for example uh, a Mustang Beta will only use maybe four four jumps and and go just a, a short distance to get to the also solar, solar system whereas a constellation will have to use like 15 or so jump points right and then use a little bit more fuel and take longer to get to the Oso star system. So again, you, you have to take that into consideration as well. So the bigger your ship, the less options you have when it comes down to jumping. So that means you have to travel longer distances to find large enough jump points to make that next jump, which will expend fuel. So that can be a problem in the long haul. So um, again, that's just a small caveat. Uh, th there may be a simple workaround with that, uh, especially when since since you could put out an ECN alert and call in a starfarer to you know refuel your ship. So I mean, there's 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 ways of getting things done. So I mean, that's that's really the only uh, obvious caveat I have so far. But um, as I look further into this I'm sure I might find more so so look for more videos in the absolute future and I hope you enjoyed uh, my presentation and got something out of it and uh, I'm done man and I'm going to have me some breakfast and I will see you guys later mm -hmm.